So you've started live stream or you've been live streaming and you're thinking about switching over to Facebook or you're already on Facebook. Well, I got news for you. We got a nice video series coming up and the first video, today's video, is going to be how to do a free profile picture. Stay tuned. Welcome to Live Streaming Tech, and if you want to learn to stream on platforms such as Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, DLive, and beyond, then make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss a single video. Hey, uh, today, man, we're going to go ahead and start out a, a, a four-part series here when it comes to optimizing your business page on Facebook. Now, you're probably saying, business page, wait, I just, I want to do live streaming. Yeah, it's important you actually get a business page because the personal ones just ain't going to cut the mustard. Well, not only that, but we've also had a lot of viewers get back with us where they found out the hard way that you can't stream on your profile page on Facebook yet. So you've got to set up these business pages. So don't think that you have to be a business or own a business. And if you really kind of think about it, streaming is a business. Yeah. So why not set up the business page? So today we're going to go ahead and make it very, very simple for you. We're going to cover the profile picture you're going to be utilizing. It's really simple. You can go one and done if you wanted to, but we're going to show you a simple and free way to do it. So without any further ado, let's do the screen wipe. Okay, to start out this video series based on Facebook business pages, we're going to see about setting up our profile picture for our business page with the open source software called GIMP. You can get that at gimp.org slash downloads. I'm going to go ahead and double click and open up GIMP. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit control and the letter N. And we're going to make the dimensions according to what Facebook recommends. And that's 170 by 170. Now, if you happen to make it a little larger, it's going to probably, they're just going to compress the image. And they're going to put it down to, I think it's 160 by 160 is how they usually display it on desktop. It might be a little smaller on mobile devices. So we're going to hit OK. All right. I'm going to press the control key, uh, key and then I'm just going to scroll right on in here with my scroll wheel. All right, uh, as I've usually done in previous tutorials, I'm going to go ahead and hit Guides underneath the Image. We're going to hit New Guide, Horizontal by 50%. And then we're going to do it again. Click on Image, go to Guides, New Guide by Percent. We're going to go Vertical. This is going to kind of get us to where we know exactly where the center's at. That way we're kind of working around. All right, so uh, the very first thing I want to do is I'm going to take one of my images here. We're going to click, drag, and drop it on in. I'm just going to press the control key and use my scroll wheel to kind of come out here. We're going to get the scale tool. We're going to click on my image. We're going to make me smaller so that way I can fit this box. Obviously, my head is enormous. We need to make sure it gets in there. We'll scroll on in. We're going to click this. We can move it right into the middle. Now, there's going to be two of our heads here in this. So I want to make sure that we are not doing too much here. Okay, so we scale them and hit scale. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and take another image here. We'll click and we'll drag it on down. Again, grabbing the scale tool, we're just going to make it a little smaller. Anytime I zoom in and out, it's super simple. All you have to do is use your control key and use the scroll wheel. For your Mac users out there, you can always use your minus key or the plus key to zoom in and out. Okay, so now I'm going to move this guy right on down here. Looks pretty good. Okay, not too bad. So we have everything pretty much set. And I'm going to do a couple little things here as we go along. Uh, obviously, we want to make sure his head's just about the same size as mine. We don't want to make it look like he has a gigantic Cro-Magnon head. Believe it or not, it's pretty normal size. Okay, so now we've got both those things in here. We're going to use some background art. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it into the background. Let's move it on down. Right behind us. Okay, not too bad. I'm going to scale that one as well because we're going to make it just a bit smaller here. In fact, why don't we see about fitting it just a bit better to everything. So we'll hit 170. Scale. Now you'll see it kind of disappear, but don't sweat it. It's just off to the side. We're going to grab the alignment tool. Left click on it. Come to Tool Options, and we're going to hit Center and Center. We're going to come on in here. Not bad. I kind of like that. 
turned out really, really nice. Now, if we wanted to change the dimensions just a little bit, we can stretch it just a bit. We can deselect this, and then we'll hit 170 on the width. Now, it's going to kind of stretch it out. You notice how it changed it a little bit? Let's just see how it looks. We're just going to experiment here for just a moment. If you find you're having issues with getting that specific layer, all you can do is just move that layer up to the top. We'll get that there. Center, center. All right. And let's go ahead and move it down. See how that looks. That actually doesn't look too terrible. Um, I like how it's kind of framed out there. But we're going to go ahead and hit undo. And I'm just going to just put it back to the way it was because I liked it a little better this way where it wasn't stretched. Okay, uh, last but not least, let's just uh, try a couple little fun things here. We're going to add a transparent layer. Hit OK. And I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to click and drag down here in the background here. All right, now that we've got this, I'm going to switch the uh, foreground color by just clicking that. And we're going to right click on the surface. We're going to go into Edit, Stroke Selection. Uh, you know, it's a small image, so I'm thinking probably right about eight pixels might be plenty. And this is going to use that foreground color right there. Ooh, just a little too large. You can see. It's taking up just a little too much real estate. So I'm just going to hit undo. We're just going to try it again. Hit edit. Stroke selection. Let's try half the size. We're going to hit four. OK. Not bad. I'm not angry at that. It's good stuff. Control shift A will deselect it. Now I kind of want it just to be a little bit lighter. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to opacity. And we're just going to kind of just get it to where it fades just a little bit. See that? Not too bad. Okay, now let's get our heads so we're a little bit more even. One thing you got to kind of bear in mind, sometimes people will view this in a circular style fashion. So we want to make sure that it can fit. So that looks pretty good. All right, I want to remove his hand here because it's a little bit, I don't know, it just seems out of place. So I'm going to grab the eraser. We're going to go on his layer and just click it right off of that. See, not too bad. All right, last but not least, let's go ahead, right click on his head. We're going to hit alpha to selection. I'm going to select the next layer down. We're going to add a transparent layer. Control and the period. Now, if you're using Mac, it's going to be the command key. Anytime I say control, it would be your command key, not the control key. Right click on the other layer. We're going to hit alpha to selection. I'm going to go back to that other layer. We're going to add another shadow down here. Good. Control shift A will deselect it. I'm going to just shut off those layers right there. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into Blur. We're going to create a little bit of a shadow here with a Gaussian Blur. 15 typically has been my little happy spot here. We're going to hit OK. Turn our heads back on. And it kind of pops out from the background. It doesn't seem deep enough. So what I'm going to do is just do a little bit more. You see that? Not too bad. The difference here, before and after. OK, so I'm pretty happy with this uh, profile picture so far. And we're going to hit Control shift in the letter E to go ahead and get it to where we export this and we can utilize this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to hit name this the Facebook make sure you select the proper folder that you want it to go under And we're going to export. Now, uh, it should be noted, you should always save your GIMP document. So that way, if you've got to go back later on and you find that like the cover uh, photo isn't all that great or your profile pic isn't all that good, you can always come back here. So we're going to hit Control and the letter S to save. And we've got a Facebook profile pic. We're going to go into Recently Used. I'm going to use the same folder here. And we're going to go ahead and hit Save. And this is all set. Now keep in mind, we're going to go ahead and you can get this template and you can utilize this whenever you like. You can go to livestreamingtech.site slash FB template. The FB stands for Facebook. And while we're kind of talking about utilizing GIMP for all these different assets, believe it or not, we actually have an entire series. If you're thinking about breaking ground on Twitch, you're going to want to, of course, get all those things set up. So go over to this other video up here. And if you're a real rebel, if you want to learn a little bit something different, we're going to surprise you with one over here. So I'll see you in either one of those videos.